गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुर् देवो महेश्वर गुरुरेव परम ब्रह्म अस्म श्री गुरव नम चिन्मय व्यापत्सर्व त्रैलोक्यम सचराचर तत्म दर्शित ये नस्म श्री गुरव नम ुष्टुदेवी संस्थितः संस्थित नमस्त 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 नमो नम या देवी सर्वूतेषु शक्ति संस्थित नमस्त 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 नमो नम या देवी सर्वूतेषु बुद्धि संस्थित नमस्त 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 नमो नम या देवी सर्वूतेषु लक्ष्मी रूपेण संस्थित नमस्त 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 नमो नम सो वर् इन दैप्टर वेर वी गॉट दि allegory of Hamalaika's friend who falls into bad company and it's the story of how ignorance comes upon us and what happens and then how to get out of it does anyone remember what verse we're on now 58 you need to start 58 yeah Which chapter? Five. five. Chapter five, verse fifty-eight. Who's chanting this evening? I can chant, Jim. All right. Thank you. Anayanti swayatanam pitaram tam shane shane tatras thiro jeshta suta. यतनम विनिवेशयतु अश्रिनोत विविधान शब्द अश्रिनोत विविधान शब्द आनस सुस्वरानितरानपि एवरी मोमेंट दे वर ब्रिंगिंग देयर फादर टू देयर हाउस देयर अस्थिरा हैविंग एंटर्ड द हाउस ऑफ द एल्डेस्ट सन हेल्ड heard various kinds of sounds melodious and otherwise so we're talking about now the complete externalization of mind into the sense object so now uh hemalek is going to go through the various senses so the first one is hearing we're going to have melodious sounds but it's not just the pretty sounds listen to what happens next kwachin madhura sangeetam kwajetadham suman simanjulam racho yachu shisamani mantranartha varnanapi shastra gamo tihasancha bhushananam cha sinchatam भृंग संघ से गीत पंचम मुखस्वर 
Sometimes he heard sweet music, sometimes sounds of musical instruments which were very pleasing. Also, Rik, Yujas, and Saman chants, and the mantras of Atharvana, script, uh, scriptures, agamas, and itihasas, and the tinklings of ornaments, the song of a multitude of black bees, and the melodious fifth note of the gamut produced by the cuckoo. So here we're talking about the various kinds of things we can hear from bird calls to scripture, etc. Going on. Evam Manoharan Shabdan Shrinuvan Putra Neda Shataha Prita Putra Vasham Praga Padatha Putro Nyathadishat Virudhan Karna Kutakan Shrinod Bhairava Ansaran Thus hearing pleasing sounds by the direction of his son and being satisfied, he became subject to his son. Then the son directed him in a different manner. He heard terrible sounds which were opposed in quality and unpleasant to the ears. Now, what we have here is the fact of what we call the dwandwas, the pairs of opposites. When the environment is conducive, we find it pleasing. When the environment is non-conducive, we find it displeasing. We call this raga, passion for something, and vesha, aversion. Now, there's something very subtle stuck in this verse. He brings all the good stuff to the mind. Then the mind revels in it and gets attached. Most of us are more than willing to renounce our misery. Oh, this is terrible. I renounce. I want it to go away. Few of us are willing to let go of our attachment to what is pleasing. So, sukham dukham cha, pleasure and suffering are the same thing. It's like the heads and tails of a coin. And where we get attached and identified is on the pleasure side. It's like saying, I don't want a two-sided coin. I have one. So that's where the difficulty comes in mature vairagya. Learning how to not let the mind extrovert and slaver all over the objects of the senses to <laughs> slurp out a little bit of happiness from them. To keep the mind tuned up, to keep the energy introverted. Shankara calls this uparati. Uparati usually means sense withdrawal, but he defines it as the best sense withdrawal is when the presence of the objects do not cause vrittis to happen in the mind, any perturbations. So you look at a leaf, a piece of gold, you look at dog poop and you look at a beautiful person. You keep it all samadhishta, quality and vision. This is really hard to do. In the beginning, you could maybe do it for five minutes at a time. Go for a walk in the park. Just really keep your mind tuned up, as quiet as you can. 
and just see objects without the superimposition of, oh, that's so nice, that's just like it used to be, blah, 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 blah. All that chintya, that after the fact rumination. Any questions about this practice? So now let's go on. And if I remember the story correctly, Hema Lake is going to go through all the senses. Going on. Singha digarjitam mekha negosham shanesthetatha Ramanda under bedanam garbha Stravanam subhayankatakaram Evam shrutva suchakita Shanya strapya shrunotatha Ruditam viprilapalitam Shochita devichitritam He heard the roaring he heard the roaring of lions and the like, the thunder of clouds and lightning, rending the universe frightening and capable of causing miscarriage. Thus having heard and much frightened, he heard thereafter other sounds also, like weeping, prattling, and strange ones like bewailing. Yes, so all the different kinds of emotions that arise from what we hear, fear, irritation, sadness, as well as pleasing, all of this is delivered to the mind via the sense objects. Going on. Dutiya. Sutani totha sthitarastad bhavanam yayao tatra pashyad mudus tatra pashyad mudus parshan yasanani shubhani cha shaya nani cha vasanshi kathina sparsha kanyapi shitas parshani vastuni Tathoshna sparshakani cha anushtha shita tapashchani vichitranya bhivikshyatu itan drishtva pramudito vichna sign, but how I, there was no way I could have known, okay? Someone out there needs to mute their mic. I'm in a class right now. Okay. Going on, please, uh, Punit. Then, led by the second son, Asthira went to his residence. There he saw beautiful seats, beds, and clothes, which were soft to touch, and also those which were hard to touch, objects which were cool to touch, and also those which were hot to touch, things which were neither cold nor hot to touch. But having seen the very things, he was delighted on seeing the beneficial things and dejected on seeing the disadvantageous things. So now he's moved from hearing to seeing. And the same idea of the dwandwas, things that bring us sukham, pleasure, things that bring us displeasure, dhukam. Going on. Atha tritiyatanaya bhavanam prapya sosthiraha apashyad Dru chirakaran bhavan vividha varnakan raktan shvetan pita nilan haritan patalanapi dhumran kadaranan kapishan mechakan kurburasthata. Then that Asthira, having reached the residence of the third son, saw objects having brilliant forms of various colors red, white, yellow, blue, green, and pink, and so on. Smoke colored, tawny, brown, black, and variegated. So again, this idea of the uh, various sense perceptions going on. 
स्थूलान कृष्णान नून दीर्घ अनायतान वर्तलास्थता अर्धवृत्तान दीर्घवृत्तान सुंदराक्ष विभीषणान बीभस्तान भास्वरान रौद्रान नालोकाश्च दृष्णमूषः क्वचि दिम तथो तथो अंच पश्य पितर पुनः अनय तुर्यतनयो भवन स्वम विचित्रित He saw objects which were large, small, atomic, long, diffuse, globular, semicircular, fully circular, beautiful, terrifying, disgusting, shining, fierce, dark, eclipsing the sight. Again, the fourth son led his father, who was seeing benefit somewhere and dif and and the different thereafter to his wonderful house. So again, we're going through the senses. uh going on to the the fourth one tatrasasad pushpani phalanya nani chakramat peyani lehya choshyani bhakshyani rasavanti vai sudhasvaduni madhuran anyaya malirasani cha कुटकानीतृक्तानीकषायाणपीकाचयत्षाराणीमधुरालाकुटतिमजेन There he found flowers, fruits, food stuffs in succession, drinks, articles of food to be licked, sucked or eaten, juicy, tasteful as nectar, sweet and different ones having sour taste, pungent, bitter and some astringent also, saline, <clears throat> sweet and acidic. pungent and sour and salty pungent and bitter and various tastes of strange nature also and was tasting the above together with his son then the son led his father to his own abode which was extremely wonderful so here again the the uh sense organ of taste so uh seeing hearing smelling tasting touching we're going to get all five going on to the next abode tatropala bhata neka pushpani cha phalani cha trinanya nyanyo shadhish cha bhavananyas cha sarvatah sugandhan puta gandhas cha mridav gandhogra gandhakan मोह गंधान ज्ञान गंधान मूर्छ गंधान विचित्रतान देयर ही ऑब्टेन वेरियस फ्लावर्स एंड फ्रूट्स ब्लेड्स ऑफ ग्रास फूड स्टेप्स हर्ब्स एंड अदर ऑब्जेक्ट्स एवरीवेयर दीस वर फ्रेग्रेंट फॉल स्मेलिंग सॉफ्ट स्मेलिंग स्ट्रांग स्मेलिंग विद डिल्यूशन इंड्यूसिंग स्मेल एंड सेंस शार्पनिंग स्मेल एंड विद स्वून प्रोड्यूसिंग स्मेल एंड अदर काइंड्स ऑफ एंड अदर्स ऑफ वेरियस काइंड्स सो नाउ वी आर seeing again the same pair of dwandwas with the sense of smell going on putranam bhavane chaivam praveshyani vishani vishanapi hiteshu ramate kwapi vishidya hite kwachet sada gamagam parah putranam bhavane babhav thus entering and halting at the residences of the sons he delights sometimes in beneficial things and is dejected with disadvantageous things somewhere he always remained in the houses of his sons wholly engaged in going and coming so here the mind which is unsteady astira 
extroverts into the world of the phenomena, the objects, seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, and smelling. And it is the sense organs that then deliver that to the mind. And that's what the mind is always doing. It's constantly engaged in its evaluation of various situations, conducive or non-conducive. Going on. Did we skip the sense of touch? Did, I sk did we ha have one of those that I didn't quite grasp? Uh, I think it was the second sense the one about the hot and cold yes yes okay should i do the next one next one please te putra pitrivas pitrivatsalya pitrihina cha nakcha kwachet prashanti vishayan chitran Valpam Vyapi Kadachana. Those sons, on account of their aff affection for their father, do not touch the various objects, even little, at any time, anywhere, without their father. So here is this interesting phenomenon how the sense organs do not really make contact with the sense objects without the participation of the mind. And we all have experiences of that. When I was a child, especially, I used to get lost in books, uh, fiction, science fiction as a kid. And I wouldn't hear my mother. She would call me for dinner and I would be oblivious to it because I was caught in the book. What was I see seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling? The beautiful world of reading. Did I hear my mother's voice? No. I fall asleep in front of the television and have a dream. Am I hearing whatever's, you know, is it uh, Stephen Colbert on the television? No. I'm having a sensory experience with whatever's going on in my dream. So only with the presence and the, the capacity of the mind turn the sense organs on in the waking state world, do we in fact make contact with it? Any thoughts or questions about this? Next one. Asthirastu putra grihe bhuktva tan vishayan bahun munushtvan ancha vishayan Guptaya nayati svampadam. Asthira, on his part, having enjoyed those numerous objects in the house of the sons and stealing some other objects by concealing them, takes them to his abode. Note, the abode of Asthira or the mind is the heart or the inner core of a person which, or which originates thought. There, the mind enjoys the objects through memory. And memory and imagination is what I would say also. So you've enjoyed the object, then you can remember at home, oh, I was at Punitz and Saundaria the other night and they made me this wonderful Thai soup. Oh, it was so delicious. Mm, I forgot to get the recipe for it. Very, very good soup. I can taste it right now in my imagination. So I've stolen the sense experience and taken it home. By the way, it was very good soup, thank you. Going on. Patanya chapalaya sakam raha putrai virna swayam bhanuktya titiram Nityam Athaya Athanya Chapalaswaya, sorry, Chapalaswasa Mahashana Patim Bavre 
manakantam tamastiram. He himself eats very much daily along with his wife, Chapala, without his sons. Then another one, the sister of Chapala, named Mahasa Mahashana, the voracious, chose the pl pleasant Asthira as her husband. Note, the sister is Asha or Desire. Her name, the voracious, is quite appropriate. So the mind then gets wedded to voracious desire. If it is a pleasing experience and after the fact I've spent time in my imagination and memory retasting it, I want to repeat the experience. A vasana has been sown which then sprouts at a future time that impels me to want to repeat the sensory experience. Now, antithetically, if you've ever watched very small children, they will be totally engaged in something. And then if something distracts them, it's just gone. no awareness of it. A child is, is in mummy's arms and it's upset because it didn't get something and it's crying and crying and you can take your keys out of your pocket and jingle it in front of the baby and it's going, wah, wah, uh, gone. Because those infants are always in the now. They're not yet stealing sense or uh, situations going over them. And therefore desire as yet has yet to develop to the degree that it does for us old timers. Then you get old people who are set in their ways, maybe your parents or grandparents, no, the table has to be set this way. Very rigid. I have to have things a certain way. So bound by our desires and control issues. No more the spontaneity and the flexibility of children. Going on. Jim, just a comment. I think the same thing is also true about puppies. You know, you, you distract them very easily with something and they forget about what they've been doing. Yes. And you can be terribly angry at a dog and do things you regret. Like it's pooped in the house and you get angry and you hit it or rub its nose in it and stuff like that. And then uh, half an hour later it's <laughs> I love you, Master. I love you, Master. It's just gone. They're able, they don't develop the kind of memory that humans have. Very, very good, good uh, example. Going on. Next one. Tasyam titaram sakto yadabhuta stiropi vai. Tada tasya prita yesa bhoga harana tatparaha. When Asthira indeed became extremely attached to her, then he was eagerly engaged in fetching objects of enjoyment for her pleasure. So then, when desire becomes very strong, it moves into tyranny. And we begin to have an addictive relationship with the world. I must have that coffee in the morning. I must have this. I must have that. And then we've lost the real power of choice. If we ever really had it. And we're tyrannized by our addictive relationship with the world. Going on. 
तेनानीतम बहवपी च भक्षित्वा क्षण मात्र पुनर्बुभुक्षा क्रांता भोगाहरण हेतवे सदा प्रियम सदंत शति सो यप सोप्या हर्तु सदेक्षते Having eaten even abundantly what was brought by him, overcome by the desire to eat again in a moment, she always directs her lover for the purpose of fetching more objects of enjoyment. He also looks for obtaining them always. So, when we try to meditate, and when we sit, we have what I like to call we're restless and irritable and discontent. this just isn't working i need to get up and do what that is is vasana pressure that's because of all the undigested all the remnants of past egoistic actions and you satisfy one desire and another one comes up another one comes up and we're driven to exhaustion trying to find satisfaction this is called bhoga b h o g a a bhogi is one who practices bhoga and their view of the world is i want to be happy and the way to be happy is to satisfy as many desires as possible seems logical at first except the end result of bhoga is more desire now yoga is practiced by yogis A yogi also wants to be happy. But understanding how the mind works this way, a yogi engages in a way of life that reduces the number of desires entertained. So they're left with an enormous amount of peace and satisfaction. Listen carefully. In Gita, Krishna says the person who gets rid of the objects of desire but allows the desire to remain behind is verily a hypocrite. That's not how you do it. And he goes on to say later, but their desire leaves them upon seeing the supreme. meaning when the mind can come home when the world falls away it's not a problem all right next one putrai pancha bhiran nitam priyenani susambhritam bhuktva shanena bhuyopi साबुभुक्षा प्रपीडिता भोगा हृताव संदिशति प्रियम पुत्राश्च सर्वदा हैविंग हैविंग ईटन इंस्टेंटली व्हाट वाज ब्रॉट बाय द फाइव सन्स एंड आल्सो व्हाट वाज कलेक्टेड बाय हर लवर एंड एफ्लिक्टेड बाय द डिजायर टू ईट अगेन शी डायरेक्ट्स हर लवर एंड सन्स ऑलवेज टू फेच ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ एन्जॉयमेंट सो शी अगेन आई लाइक टू यूज द वर्ड टिरनाइजेस the tyranny of compulsion the tyranny of this addictive relationship with the world going on tat sa swalpa kalena sushuve putra yo yuragam jwala muk tayo jeshtho ningha vritta sta thaparah सदा मातु प्रियतमाओ तव पुत्र देर आफ्टर इन अ शॉर्ट टाइम शी गेव बर्थ टू अ पेयर ऑफ सन्स ज्वालामुखा फ्लेमिंग माउथ वॉज द एल्डर ऑफ द टू 
and Nin Nindya Vritta, bad conduct, was the other. The two sons became the most beloved of the mother always. Note, the elder son Jwala Mukha is Krodha, anger. The other one, Nindya Vritta, is Lobha, greed. So what happens when I'm under the tyranny of uh, Madam Voracious? I'm angry and greedy. So here what we need to do is define what anger is. Yoga has a very interesting definition of anger. Anger is thwarted desire or unmet expectation. That's what it is. Whenever I'm stuck and my instincts are in conflict with another person or the world, I want, I want, I want, I want. And these instincts are in collision and I'm not getting what I want, I'm angry. Some person, some situation doesn't meet my expectation. I get angry. Ego says, get out the baseball bat and beat the world into submission. Yoga says, understand what the cause is and drop your attachment to the desire. And of course, greed, the more you get, the more you want. I always love what Swamiji used to say. If sex were satisfying, you'd only do it once. Someone gets a promotion at work and in a year or two, they're not satisfied. They need another promotion. Such is the nature of this more, more. You become more fiends. More, more, more. This is the bogey who's deeply immersed. In the world. Going on. Mahashana Yama Sakaha Sashlish Yati Yadasthiraha Tada Jwala Mukha Jwala Lead her server Kalevaraha Asthira Pirito Tiantam Guard her Murcha Mupaitihi When Asthira attached to Mahasi, Mahashana embraces her, then Asthira, with the entire body lapped by the flames of Jwala Mukha and extremely afflicted thereby, indeed goes into deep fainting. So what happens when the unsteady mind is under the throes of anger? You lose discrimination. You become deluded. You do stupid things. Who of us can say, oh, when I reacted in anger, so many good things happen as a result of that. I don't know about you. But frequently I've said things, done things, which afterward did not turn out to be the most skillful action, to put it mildly. So the mind faints, the mind gets deluded, the mind does stupid things when we're angry. Next. 
ಕದಾಚಿನ್ನಿಂಗವೃತ್ತೇನ ಸಂಗತ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಸೂನುನಾಂಗತಾಮೇತಿ ಮೃತ್ಯುಲ್ಯೋ ಹಿ ಜಾಯತೆ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ Nindya Vritta, the dear son, he attains to the state of being censured by everybody and indeed becomes equal to a dead man. So again, when we're in the greedy state, we again do things that cause us to be censured by others. And we get in things like shame spirals. all sorts of uh, low self esteem and things like that going on evam yadha sthiro jato dukha bhogai katat parah tada sakhi me swabhava sati putre sthira vyaye ati vatsalya yat tasken sangata tasya dukhatah ದುಃಖ ಭಾರ ಸಮಾಕ್ರಾಂತ ನಿಂಘತ್ ವೃತ್ತೇನ ಸಂಗತ ಜ್ವಾಲಾ ಮುಖೇನ ಚ ತಥಾ ಪೌತ್ರೇಣ ಲೇಷಿತ ಸತಿ ಸುದ್ಗದ್ಧಾ ನಿಂದಿತ ಲೋಕ್ಯಂ ತಪಯ ಬಭೂವ ತಾಂ ಸದಾ ನು ಗತಾಚಾಹಂ ಲುಪ್ತ ಪ್ರಾಯ ಭವಂ ಪ್ರಿಯ Thus, when Asthira became solely engaged in suffering grief, then my friend, who was naturally good on account of great affection towards her son Asthira and being associated with him, was greatly overcome by the burden of sorrow arising from her son's grief. Then, associated with Nindya Vritta and also being embraced by her grandson Jwala Mukha, she was tormented and blamed by people and became almost dead. Dear, I also, who was following her always, became almost lost. Note, when the limitations of the intellect in the form of anger and greed cast their shadow, the conscious nature of the soul does not shine and it appears to have been lost. And also what happens, my experiences, I am angry, I am sad, I am frightened. I am greedy. I am suffering. It seems like it's happening to me. Because of the thickness of spiritual ignorance. I cannot see the difference between the self and the non-self. going on evam bahuni varshani sakhya dukhena dukhita asthiro bhudavastantro mahashana parigrahat thus for many years i was distressed by the grief of my friend asthira became dependent on the account of the hold of mahashana so the mind then becomes dependent on desire and the subtle intellect what we would call the jiva sense of where the ego senses suffers going on puram prapa dashadwaram kena chit karmana kvachit tasmin mahashana yukto putraim ಮಾತ್ರ ನ್ಯವಸತ್ ಸ ಸುಖ ಪ್ರೇಪ್ಯ ಸುಖ ದುಃಖ ಭುಜನ್ ದಿವಾಶನ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಸಮ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಹಿ ರೀಚ್ ಅ ಸಿರಿ ವಿತ್ ಟೆನ್ ಗೇಟ್ ಸಮ್ವೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಹಿ ಲಿವ್ ಯುನೈಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಮಹಾಶನ ಎನ್ ಅಕಂಪನೀಡ್ ಬೈ ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಮದರ್ ಎನ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಡಿಸೈರಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಸಫರಿಂಗ್ ಗ್ರೀಫ್ ಡೇ ಅಂಡ್ ನೈಟ್ and of course the 10 gated city is the body with the five organs of action and the five organs of knowledge going on putra bhyam dagdha sarvango nindita chanu vasaram 
His entire body afflicted by his two sons and censured day after day, he was indeed pulled at all times hither and thither by his two wives. So again, the mind suffers and suffers and suffers when it's in this state, which has as its origin avidya, ignorance. Remember, that's where her dear friend, the clear buddhi, has her bad association with avidya, ignorance. Going on. Putranam panchabhavanam pravishan nivishanapi atyantam shranti mayati na sukham labhate kvachet. Entering the five houses of his sons and halting there, he attains very great fatigue and does not obtain happiness anywhere. So the mind keeps going from sense experience to sense experience trying to eke out a little bit of happiness. I like to say you get a nickel's worth of happiness for 95 cents worth of work. It's bad economics. Work, struggle, you get, how does Shakespeare put it? We grunt and sweat under a weary life. Such is the way most people live. Going on. Evam putrasya dukhina sakhi metyanta dukhita abhu murcha takalpasa evam tatpara avasat. Thus, my friend was extremely distressed by the grief of her son. She became almost like one who is insensible and thus lived in that city. And so the intellect under the influence of, the, the, uh, of ignorance, the unsteady mind uh, becomes more and more animal-like, reaches a state of insensibility, such as the Description in this allegory of the descent of the person into misery. Going on. Jwala mukha ninan gritta yutaya samahashana shunya khyaya poshita cha mudhena shwa shurena cha tatha sampanyata. Sampan, sampantya, ya chapala, khyaya, tyantam samedhita. That Mahashana, accompanied by Jwala Mukha and Nindya Vrta, was nourished by her grandmother in law named Shunya and her father in law named Mudha. Also, she was very much brought up by the co wife named Chapala. So again, we're all these, this various chain of events. It's all fed by uh, the ignorance. I forget who Chapala is. Do you remember Puneet? Uh, sister of... Uh, but what's, what's it stand for? What's the, the metaphor? The imagination, I think. Kalpana, from Kalpana, I think came Chapala, imagination. Good, good, thank you, yes. So all of this whole process goes on and on and on. Next one. Asthiram svavashe chakre patim tatpura sanchita sakhi pritya tatra chaham ahvasam tatparasati. She brought her husband Asthira under her control, remaining in that city. Due to my love for my friend, I also lived there exclusively devoted to her. So meaning even this misery 
is illumined by, enlivened by the Brahman contact, the touch of the self. Are you miserable? Oh, I'm so miserable. Do you know you are miserable? Yes. I know I shine on my misery. Even that is not absent from, apart from the self. Going on. Sakhi dukha dha tat praya sarvesham rakshano dhyata yadhyaham patra narasyam vaishana matram api priya na bhave tatra chakropi maya sarvam hi rakshitam Dear, if I, who was nearly lost on account of my grief for my friend, were not even there for a moment intent on the protection of all, no one could have been there. Everything was indeed protected by me. Yes. So again, uh, riffing on this idea that all of it takes place, all of it moves because of the presence, because of this asparsha yoga, this touch of the untouched of the self. Going on. Shunya ya, shunya tam prapta, mudhena mudha tam api, asthirena sthiratvatvam, cha chapalyam chapal, chapalayuta, jwala mukhat, Jwalatam cha nindha vrittat tadatmatam sakhi sanyogatash chaivam abhavam tat tadakritihi sakhi yadi vimunchami sal nashyet shanamatrataha. I suffered emptiness or delusion uh, or dejection due to shunya, foolishness due to mudha unsteadiness due to asthira, fickleness united with chapala, burning nature from jwala mukha and from nindya vritta, a state made up of nature. On account of my association with my friend, I thus became of the same form as every one of them. If I leave my friend, she would perish instantly. Note, it is by the presence of the soul or individualized consciousness about, uh, consciousness all the above entities move and have their being, and they in turn conceal the real nature of the soul. Yes. So where does this uh, concealment take place? It is not the self that is deluded. It is in fact the subtle intellect. Both bondage and liberation occur to the mind technically actually to the vijnana maya kusha, the subtle intellect. The self is ever free. Do not get confused. The self does not undergo anything. It simply is the witnessing consciousness of it all. Going on. Mam Sangha Tena Te Shamvai Samahuvya Vicharinim Jana Mudha Sarva Eva Kushala Nirmalam Viduhu Because of my association with them, foolish men called me, call me an adulteress, but all clever people considered me as stainless. So the Wise people, those who engage in vichara, in investigation, see that the self is in fact beyond all the impurities of the body and the mind and the intellect. It's only foolish people who think that the self, my self, 
has all these qualities, positive and negative. Going on. Mahasati me janani vishuddha nirmalakritihi akashadapi vistar vistirna sukshmacha paramanutaha my mother, a very chaste woman, was pure and having a stainless form. She was more extended than the sky and subtler than the atom. So here's the description of the of Tripura, the goddess, infinite consciousness, which is the same as Brahman, which is the ground of being. Here, Hemaleka says that's the mother of this individual buddhi intellect. Going on. Sarva jnana pyakin chintya sarva katrapi nishkraya sarva shraya Pyanadhara, Sarvadhara, Pyanashtit Nashrita. Though all knowing, she was not knowing anything. Though all doing, she was actionless. Though the substratum of all, she had no support. Though the support of all, she was not inhabiting anything. Note All things shine by the light of pure consciousness, so she is the support of all but nothing apart from her exists in her. So she cannot also be called the support of anything. So what we have here is this paradox. One of the famous statements of Adi Shankara, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya. Brahman alone is real. All the phenomenal world is mitya. It's illusory. It's a projection. It's like a big hologram. Comes about like a dream comes about. Do the sorrows of the dream really exist? Well, they're a real experience. But when you wake up, you see they're just, they're just dreams. They have no substance to them. So also is this world. Going on. Sarva rupa pya rupa sa. Sarva yukta pya samyuta sarvatra bhasanam api nagyaya kena chitkvachit. Though having the form of all, she was formless. Though associated with everything, she was unattached. Though shining everywhere, she was unknowable by anybody anywhere. So, this self, the goddess, is not out there beyond the galaxies. It's our very self. And when we say the self is unknowable, we mean it is not knowable as an object. Yet it is swayambhu, it is self-evident, self-shining. Meaning, it shines as I, I. Going on. Mahananda Pyananda Mata Pitra Pivarjita Madrishya Tanayastasya Santi Sankhya Vivarjita. Though full of bliss, she was devoid of bliss. She was without father and mother. There are innumerable children like me for her. 
Note, devoid of bliss because there is nothing apart from her to derive bliss from. So this word ananda, it's very difficult to understand. I like to translate it in the beginning as no sorrow reaches there. If you're experiencing the self always, all the time, and the self is changeless, Satchidananda and Nityam, eternal and changeless. That means you're experiencing Satchidananda right now. Well, I had a crappy day. I don't know whether I'd call it blissful, which means you do not understand what bliss means. So we start by saying no sorrow reaches there, nothing reaches there. Understand it's not the self that has any of the problems. It's the human mind. When the human mind under the throes of ignorance is projected into the world, we've had this wonderful term earlier on, kartavya, meaning I have to do stuff, I have to struggle. And the mind is unhappy. It's like the waves of the ocean storming. But when I have mature vairagya, I can let it go. Then the mind ceases to be a mind, it comes home. Like the waves of the ocean subside into the still, calm sea. Because the self is bliss absolute, the mind can be blissful. Going on. Yatha taranga jale dhara. Sankhya Sodarani Ganaha Sarvasta Matsamachara Rajaputra Bhavanti Vai. There are a numberless multitude of sisters as there are waves in the ocean. Prince, all of them are indeed of the same conduct as me. Meaning these individual beings in the world are numberless, but all of them have as their essential nature, the mother. She is the substratum, she is the only sentience there is. She is the life principle, the support of the whole creation. Going on. Maha mantra vati chaham Saverati Saveritai Sakhi ganai Sangata tatpara chapi Matritulya swarupataha. I am possessed of great mantra power. Hence, though associated with and devoted to all these group of friends, I am equal to my mother in my real nature. Note. Maya or the wailing power of the pure consciousness is here referred to as the mantra power. So it is, uh, we have the question, where is the locus of Maya? It is in Brahman. It is the cause of the mind and everything. Uh, I've gone way over. I lost track of the time. How many more shlokas do we have, uh, Puneet? Uh, we have a, a 30, 30 more, I think. Okay. So I'm, I'm way over, so we'll stop here, and we, we have a short period for questions. Anybody have questions? We got started a bit late tonight, too.
his uh, mother Mary like a same symbolism as the mother here you think that's a very good question uh, for the mystics perhaps for the more orthodox she is a human being and she's Jesus's mother uh, but Christians, especially Catholics, pray to Mother Mary. And it's a way to approach the divinity in a feminine way. And in parts of, of the Christian world, she's uh, in many ways more accessible than, than they feel Jesus is. For example, in Latin America, especially, great devotion to the mother. And unlike in India, where the terrible aspects are shown, like with Kali Ma and Durga, uh, in, in uh, the Virgin Mary, she's always uh, uh, seen as a beneficent uh, force. It's so it's kind of grim, our uh, allegory about the descent of a human being into our stupid misery and hopefully next week we'll finish this and get out of it let's sit for a bit